So what we've done here is created a model that mimics the exact dimensions of the French Broad River in Woodfin. And so you can see we've done a laser scan of the riverbed itself. You can see these bedrock protrusions which mimic the real bedrock that's in the river. And in fact, if you look closely on the sides here, you can see the outlines of some old bridge pylons which had been in the river, which are currently in the river, had been in the model. Um, we ran the model with the bridge still in place and then we expect to remove it and so we've removed it from the model. You can see that in the white area there where we dragged it down. Um, you can start to see how we've superimposed our improvements upon that existing riverbed. So the railroad bed's removed, we've got some bank terracing where the beach area and access is. This will all be natural rock and not concrete as the color implies. And then the drop structure itself is built to span the French Broad River. On this side is our recreational feature. Um, that'll be for the kayakers and the, the more adventurous folks who are ready to take on that whitewater. On that far side is our, is our safe boater bypass and fish passage. The fish passage is created out of natural stone that's protruding up from the riverbed to create that natural river roughness that fish use for velocity barriers as they navigate upstream through the French Broad. Um, we'll have that transition area in here. It lower flows just like a natural river. It'll be deeper in the center. And then as, it's, as it gets higher and higher, those flows will spread out to the sides. We will have some natural boulder clusters as you go downstream. Those are velocity barriers for fish as well as people, so that'll be our skills development area. The drop structure itself is designed to take the flows of this very wide, broad river, hence the name, and narrow it into one slot so we can efficiently create a hydraulic jump to surf on. This low flow shot slot is the lowest in elevation across the whole structure. So with those lower flows, sort of 700 to 1,000 CFS, this slot will start to fill up and then the water will spread outward into the medium flow slot and then as it gets higher and higher we expect it to flow over the high flow parts of the structure. The intent is that we create that wave in this central slot so that at these bigger flood levels we're not creating a river-wide hydraulic that could capture somebody in a way they didn't want to be. Um, you can see that we've excavated into the bedrock to allow room for that hydraulic jump to occur. And then as we started tuning, we found that um, we get better results with these adjustable blocks that we'll be able to place on top of that low flow chute. Um, and also increasing the efficiency of flow as it comes into um, the drop structure itself. One thing to understand about today's exercise is, for fun, we can do whatever we want. We can flood this, uh, we can pinch it, we can narrow it. In real life, we're not allowed to pinch it so much that we cause upstream flooding. So homes upstream uh, don't want to see this water rise and get flooded out in the next big flood. We've designed this so it doesn't do that. And that gives us very little flexibility in terms of how we can do massive changes in this. The tuning exercise that we're doing today is related to how we configure the blocks that we attach to this low flow plate as well as how we configure these medium flow plates within the confines of that computer model.